Good morning. Hi, Joe. Thank you for joining us today on the Moxie Member Spotlight. We have Joe Flaherty from Mercer Culinary, who's the senior vice president over there, um, head honcho, which is pretty fun. Um, and Joe has graciously taken some time to sit down with me and just kind of give you guys a little um, glimpse into who he is and what he does and also what his life is like outside of food service. So, Joe, thank you for having Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, Cade. Great. Good morning. This is awesome. I'm super excited. So I took a look over your answers. So I'm, I'm excited to talk with you about this because one of your questions, I've literally never heard the answer, like someone's answer be that. So I'm excited. Okay. So your first one, what's your favorite non-work activity and why? Oh, uh, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what I said there, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's probably something to do the tune of, uh, cooking and entertaining with people. That's exactly what you friend. said. Yeah, all the good stuff awesome. that I do, uh, you know, uh, on a daily basis. I'm a big fan of food and and uh, cooking and researching food and and uh, beverages as well as uh, entertaining and parties, things like that. Yeah, that's and awesome. What's been your favorite thing um, that you have learned, like when researching food and stuff like that? What's your favorite fun fact? Oh, that's a very, that's a great question, Kate. I don't know, you know, I, I, you know, because it's summertime or it's wrapping up summertime, really fall now. But uh, you know, barbecue is is a big passion of mine. I, I love to uh, smoke meats and and grill and and just uh, kind of study uh, the the ways of uh, of smoking meats, barbecuing preparation for large uh, sides of a product, you know, like uh, brisket or standing rib roasts, ribs, all that good stuff that awesome. people like to enjoy uh, in the backyard, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. I just made a brisket red sauce yesterday that I braised for like six hours and it was, it was awesome. Nice. So you said brisket and I'm like, oh, a little familiar. Um, okay. So next question, your guilty pleasure, what can you not live without? So these are going to be things like reality TV, specific junk foods 80s hair bands what what is it i think that i think my answer was guitars i'm a big guitar mm -hmm. uh collector i i've been playing guitar for 30 years um i'm a much better collector than i am player but uh that's really my guilty pleasure when i'm not that's awesome uh, working it's a good form of relaxation and uh, just all around pleasure in my life is, uh, that's awesome do you build them as well guitar. I don't build them. At one point, I was building uh, uh, cigar box amplifiers and oh, that's uh, cool. amps out of cigar boxes and selling them on Etsy and, and making a fortune that way as my side hustle. And uh, then I realized that uh, I wasn't making a fortune um, <laughs> and I really wasn't that good at it. Um, and so I stopped doing that, but uh, it was fun for a while. I, I still play. That's awesome. Uh, cigar box guitars. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's awesome. Okay. So next question for you, if you could eat anywhere for your next meal, where would that be and why? Well, my answer was Barafina in uh, mm -hmm. Soho in London. And it just so happens I ate there on Tuesday this week, uh, this past week. And it, and it was fantastic as always. That's it's, awesome. Uh, it's a Spanish a Spanish tapas type uh, restaurant uh, and uh, features mostly Basque area food. And uh, it's just one of the, it was a, it's a Michelin, one Michelin star restaurant. It's very unique because it's a counter service and one of the only counter service Michelin star restaurants in the world. Uh, oh, that's one interesting. Of the food, food cities in the world too, London. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm actually, I'm going to London actually in, 20 days. So if we're in Soho, I'll have to pop by and check it out. I can give you a lot of good recommendations. There's yes, a lot, a lot of that, good and then, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Well, we'll have to check, chat about that in a little bit. Um, okay. So if you had one piece of advice to give a young person in the industry, what would it be? Yeah, the, the, the best advice I could give anyone who's young and in the industry is to jump all in and, and get involved in organizations, whether it's uh, NAFM or MOFSI or CEFESA or any of the um, associations along with your industry. Um, 
you want to meet as many people as possible. You want to get different ideas, experiences, and start building up your network. Um, to me, I think the most important thing is you know, when someone's young and in, in the business is to try and find a mentor or to emulate those that you think are uh, admire and uh, are willing to help you in, in your journey along in this wonderful world of food service. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely, I, I agree with you being pretty young in the industry. It is really helpful, like going to Mofsi and like purposely connecting with people on LinkedIn and making all of those connections when you meet people at shows or whatever, like it's so important. So yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a really good point. I think, I think it's good to have peers as well, you know, in, mm -hmm. in your uh, experience level, age group, whatever you, you want to describe it. But uh, if, if you have peers and you can discuss, um, you know, struggles or challenges or, or uh, wins. That's, it's just fantastic to be able to yeah. reach out as much as possible and uh, network in, in the industry. Everybody's, uh, it, it's a great industry. I mean, is, is mm -hmm. there a better industry than what we're doing? I, I don't know because I've been in this my whole life, but from what I'm told uh, by everybody that they wouldn't change it and, and yeah. I wouldn't either. I think it's, it's hospitality and it's, it's kind of a mindset. So yeah. Absolutely. Be pretty open. That's awesome. I love that. Okay. So what's your favorite part of being a Mopsy member? Uh, favorite part, you know, Mopsy again is, is, is just one of these it offers a great opportunity to, to network in, in the group. Um, we, we've made a lot of wonderful connections with our representatives. Uh, we found representatives throughout the years and uh, just just been able to bounce ideas off of it as well as going to conferences where we've just, you know, there's a lot of learning sessions that have been very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes as a manufacturer, you don't always um, understand the, the viewpoint of, of, of your representative partners. And it's good to, you know, get together and hear the collective discuss their business um, ideas as well as their challenges and and working together to make it better for everyone that's awesome that's i think that's like a perfect way to explain that that's really cool i love that okay so next question for you is you said your this was the question that stumped me that i was like i have never had somebody answer it like this you said your favorite food is butter why i, I did i say that yeah <laughs> I mean, isn't it everyone's favorite food? That's true. <laughs> you know, the, okay, the French uh, the secret, the secret to, to, uh, to good cooking is always butter. So, you know, yeah. it's not, I'm not sitting down eating a plate of, of, of butter. Like, uh, yeah, that makes too sense. Often, uh, you know, but every now and then. <laughs> every time you go to France. Cake. Right. Yeah. Butter your bacon. Like, Perfect. That's the there's, <laughs> You know, there's a lot of dairy here. We, we, we have to support the butter. Culture, yeah, abso French absolutely. Culture. That's awesome. You're like, every time I go to France, I eat at least one stick. It's really good for the heart. Um, okay, what's the best kind you've had? Because I know people like you can make garlic butter and cinnamon sugar and all this stuff. That's what's a your very favorite? Good question. I can discuss this. I can discuss this for hours, Kate. I don't know how long you want to talk about butter, but <laughs> uh, you know, most people would say, oh, Kerrygold is good, but it's not. It's mm -hmm. Plugera from France is is the best butter out there. I'm not getting paid to say that. Um, but it, it really is. Uh, that's what most of the French pastry chefs are using. And okay. I highly recommend it. <laughs> okay. So I, I'll, I'm also going to France next month. So I will make sure every time I like walk in, I'm like, what kind I'm of sure butter you can find do you some local, yeah. You can find some local roadside butter that's just churned up. That'll be great. That's awesome. That's knock awesome. on somebody's door. Everyone there is, is required to make their own butter, I believe. That one. Okay. That's good to know. Awesome. Okay. So, um, this is such a bummer. Your answer, like, honestly, what sport team do you support the most? And it was Michigan state, right? Yeah. Yeah. That I is mean, such a bummer. I mean, that is such a bummer. Why is that? <laughs> I'm an, I'm a Buckeye. I went to Ohio state born and bred no, Buckeyes Ohio and, and Michigan state. Buckeyes in Michigan State get along very well, typically. I know, but it, but like when it's not, is, 
Right. Yeah, the rivalry with uh, U of M, obviously. Is, uh, yes. Is no, ab- absolutely. I just think everybody should be a Buckeye. So <laughs> I always have a couple qualms with people that don't. But like, you like butter, I like butter, so we can like get past that. But um, I, mean, I definitely Michigan State is butter. Ohio State is like, I can't believe it's not butter, right? <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I mean, have you seen how we've been playing lately? I, yeah. It's I don't know. I don't know. I'll take I'll take your word for it that we are can't believe it's not better. Um, That's awesome. (laughs) That's that's true. Or like butter substitute, I guess. Or like what's the movie theater butter that you like pop onto popcorn? Like that stuff is just like that. At least we're not world. Yeah, we're not world. I don't know. That's awesome. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that, that is true. Okay. So you said your favorite dining experience was the Wisconsin Supper Club experience. I want to hear about that because I just learned what that was. I read a book actually about that. And I, you had like written it on your answers. And I'm like, oh, I know what that, I know what that is. That's cool. So what is it? And just to clarify, I'm not saying it's the best dining experience. It is one of the greatest dining experiences, a a true Wisconsin or Midwestern, I guess they do it in Minnesota and probably in the UP, the Supper Club, which is, uh, you know, it's a regimented dinner uh of of that has certain characteristics here in 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 Wisconsin and uh, around the area uh, where you would uh, come into a establishment, uh, a club, restaurant, bar, and typically you go into the bar and you'd have a drink first and order your dinner at the bar. That's the pretty standard at, 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 a, at the traditional supper clubs. And then once you have your, uh, your old fashioned, you'd then go to your, you'd be escorted to your seat where a, a fancy relish tray of, of the greatest pickled goods will be sitting there. And then, you know, enjoy your prime rib or whatnot. A little trip to the salad bar, maybe some pudding for dessert. You know, who knows? It's just crazy. You're probably going to have a, you know, a pink squirrel ice cream drink afterwards and then uh, get along your merry way with your high cholesterol. And, That's uh, awesome. High cholesterol is a requirement. It's very, it's very, very kitschy, very, you know, backwoods uh, fun, you know. But, That's awesome. Uh, you, you can't beat it. I mean, there's plenty of better uh, better eat food in the world, uh, but uh, you got to love the tradition of it. No, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, I went to a supper club a couple years ago, but it was not at all kind of like what you had ex- had described. So I'm like, I think I know what it is, but I did not. So that's really cool. Um, okay. You'll so know when last- you're there. Uh, right. they're, they're very, uh, they have a certain ambiance. <laughs> yes, that's kind of what I heard. There's a comedian that um, is from Wisconsin, and I've heard him talk about supper clubs. And like, he kind of explained it the way that you did. So that's, that's really funny. That's awesome. Can't beat it. That's great. Okay, so the last question I have for you, uh, what brings you the most satisfaction in your current role? You had put winning. And so in that vein, um, <laughs> what is a recent win of yours professionally and personally? Oh, I mean, winning any any good salesperson is going to say winning is going to bring you the best satisfaction. You know, that that is true. And, and that as well as uh, teamwork in, in, in winning over any uh, major uh, project with clients and partners is always is is always the best feeling uh, for me uh, and and the collaboration amongst teams amongst uh, you know our team works very very heavily together uh, we all can do just about anybody else's is job and role so it, it, it's very important that uh, we take a teamwork approach to our customers and our partners out there that uh, we're, we're driving business in the right direction. We spend a, a significant awesome. amount of time uh, doing end user specification and working with our, um, you know, our marketing team does a phenomenal job in driving our brand um, with the, the tools that, that are, are prominent in today's uh, buyer, um, which is, you know, online, resources, uh, brand influence, and, 
and just having a great overall quality product experience. And, you know, for us, uh, we have wins all the time and I can't really specify by, you know, one that was better than another recently, because the small wins are just as good as the big wins. And if we uh, do a, a large chain rollout or chain specification, that's great. Yeah, and we love it. Um, but sometimes it's it's the smaller accounts that, that we're working with that we're able to uh, bring business to or, you know, um, close a, a, a stocking order at a cash and carry uh, operation. All those wins really feel feel. Uh, really good for all of us. And and that's what we do day in and day out is just try to spend as much time, you know, working together to, to have those wins. Um, that's awesome. Now, personally, uh, you know, just, just, you know, it's, it's good to be out and this year traveled as much as I did um, pre COVID. So, you know, it, it's nice to, to really get out and see customers all around the world. We're in the second half of the year here where we really focus a lot on our international uh, business and, and we'll be traveling to um, host in, in, in two weeks here. And we'll get to see a lot of our international partners and, and we've been following up basically with everything that we, we did in the first six to eight months of the year with uh, shows and, and uh, meetings and, and look forward to an exciting Q4 and going into 2024, we're optimistic um, and, and we've got a lot of new products offering. So it's, it's always good to talk to people about that. So that's awesome. Well, I'm glad I made that's it another awesome. year around. So. <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I know that it's always so fun to have different Mopsy members just um, sitting and talking about who they are and what they do in the industry and also just who they are as people. So I appreciate uh, your time. Thank you guys for joining us and uh, we'll catch you on the next edition.